Felix here, good morning to you. Today is the day. The end is nigh, tapering is coming, and the world's predicting a crash. I'm telling you why we're not going to get one. Basic rule of thumb, the market only crashes on unexpected news. A tapering is probably the most expected event of the year. We have had months and months and months of announcements. So I don't think a crash is coming anytime soon. Um, I have also more positive news out for you. Down below, Bank of America says these 13 stocks are going to rebound from uh, basically tax loss harvestings, harvesting. So if you want to jump on them, I'll show them to you. Nice, beautiful benchmark as usual. So jump on those completely free. Uh, I changed the link here, didn't I? Uh, here it is. Felixfriends.org slash 13 for those stocks. And you can also see just now that we have reached over $2,000. For donations to our lovely friendly goats. So thank you very much for all those likes. Keep them coming. It's much appreciated. Uh, Martin just mentioned the link to the course program uh, wasn't working. It's working again just now. Thank you, Martin, for letting me know. I fixed it. It works. You can use it either this one right here or the one down below in the link. They both work equally. As always, none of this is financial advice. This is just the thoughts of this madman here in Hong Kong. And I appreciate you tuning in and I appreciate your questions and everything uh, that you do to support this wonderful channel. Um, if you are already on the Discord or Patreon, uh, you, by the way, don't have to register for these links that I put out. Uh, you can just go on the Patreon and you can see them there, all in their beauty without having to log into anything. Now, what are we expecting today? Obviously, Fed meeting, 2 p.m. today, and that will be, well, the end of the world. I've obviously sold everything I have. I've shorted the market. I've dug some holes. I've buried some gold, and I've gotten myself some goats to become self-sufficient. Uh, that's what you should be doing if you're listening to um, fellow YouTubers here. Uh, Robert says, uh, how to make a million in the crash coming. A 93% housing market crash from Zoe Stoic Finance. This ch chap sold for real. It's happening. Zillow sold everything, uh, crashing, minus 15% today. That's real estate, apparently. Bubble warning. It'll be worse than 2018. And panic buying is going to, it's all out of control to even used cars are crashing. So 93% um, here again. I don't know where that number comes from. Maybe this one copied the other one. Who knows? What is all about this whole Zillow story? Well, basically, Zillow realized they are a beautiful business. They're a shovel business. And why on earth they ever went into buying and selling real, real estate? I have no idea. It's a bad business. And they got out of it and they're getting out of it at a loss. I actually salute management for that. I think you are in a hole. You need to dig yourself out and you need to just leave it. And they're doing that and they're returning to the roots as a beautiful shovel business. And I think that's going to actually improve their numbers here. So I think that's a good thing. Um, Adam, uh, Investry, Anthony, thank you very much. Welcome, Stefan. Lots of you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I uh, appreciate everybody joining and for destroying the like button as usual. So we have economic numbers out, as I said here. Fed decision, 2 p.m. at 10 a.m. We're also going to get a bunch of economic data out that are yeah, they're important-ish, factory orders and so on. People are going to jump up and down on that. Uh, crude oil stocks. Some people are going to say inflation is out of control when they see those numbers. So uh, lots of reasons to put out videos with lots of panic. I shall try to restrain myself, even though the clicks are really easy when you cause panic. You know, that's why people do it. It's a bit like crypto. You know why people make crypto videos? The advertising revenue is three times as high as if you're talking about stocks. So if I just started talking about Shiba Inu and, and, and all sorts of nonsense every single day and told you all to buy it and run, you know, fly to the moon with it, uh, I'd be, uh, be tripling my, my advertising revenue here. But I'm not going to do that because I don't believe in, in those things as uh, investments. Flutter, yes. A bit of fun, yes. FOMO buying, yes. We're all guilty of that. But if you want to learn how to invest properly and how to pick great stocks, join me on Saturday, free webinar. It's not on YouTube, so you have to register. So click on that link down there below, felixfriends.org slash webinar, if you're only listening in. I appreciate a lot of you are actually listening and you're not watching. So I'm going to try and make this a little bit less visual and read things out a bit more. Um, um, Jean-Francois, hello to Dubai there. Um, Danny, thoughts on buying Zillow? We'll have a look at the chart in a moment. I actually think what they're doing is a good thing, as, as I just said. And 
Uh, Jean-Francois, I should be buying Neo before the opening. Well, Neo's already gone up in the extended hours here. Last time I looked, 0.7% at 41.60. I think earnings will not be a massive, wonderful explosion of a surprise because look at Q3 delivery numbers. You kind of know what they are. So you're not going to get something massive there. And there will have been extra costs for them for all sorts of things related to supply chain shortages and so on. So I also don't think we're going to get massive improvements in operating margins and vehicle margins. But uh, the forward-looking guidance is definitely the part that we look forward to. The Q&A at the end is what we look forward to. And we are, of course, streaming that here. So if you are on the channel, um, here you can see, by the way, our 2,142 US dollars so far. That's since February this year. Uh, well, January, technically, but we only started for seven days in January. But you know what you can see here? That people are liking less. So the enthusiasm for likes and for goats seems to be waning. I'm trying to revive it. So, you know, shake yourself awake and, and click click a few few more likes on a few more videos. It'd be truly appreciated. And we can send those lovely gentle barn goats here. Here's one being cuddled. Isn't he lovely? Look at that beard. We can send them some more money. So, uh, Patrick, no, I didn't sell it all. No, of course not. Uh, that would be complete and utter madness. If you watched my video yesterday, my sort of anti-crash video, really, uh, which is kind of what I call it. I'll, I'll show it to you. Uh, I think YouTube doesn't like anti-crash videos. Only 2,000 people have seen this. But um, I put a put a picture of Tom up there so, and, and slightly unintentionally actually po pointed the arrow at him. I just wanted to sort of point at some crash videos and he'd just done one. So he happens to be the top of the list. But uh, seriously, watch that because uh, I, I got to give you some data that's the opposite of what everybody else is give, gives you. And also some food for thought on missing positive days and, 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 and for so that you, you miss out on potential crashes here. So uh, doing this loses you money. Uh, and I think that's exactly true. New earnings are also out. Make sure you set the little reminders here, you know, a little bit of housekeeping, important to do that. Uh, Ibrahim, okay, you confused me there with the extra consonant in your letter. He's asking, when are the barber earnings? It's a mystery. That really is a mystery. Why is that a mystery? Um, it's not just because of the goats here. It's because last quarter they were on the third. So we were expecting them tomorrow. But if you go on the Barber Investor Relations site, nothing. Silence. Zero news. So they're obviously not tomorrow. Otherwise, they would have told us unless they're holding them in a dark room because they are too afraid of the crash and what the Fed's going to do today. Uh, Klaus wants to see Winston and Taluna more often. Yeah, they are a little bit media. Winston has just been chewed for the last hour by a Labrador uh, neighbor, and he's absolutely exhausted and lying on a rug. And uh, Taluna is a bit of a moody creature. She does what she wants. But I put some pictures up on the, if you are if you are on the Discord, I occasionally share some pictures here. Uh, so here was me and Winston yesterday. We went for a run. And then here, people are here tuning in. They're like, why is this guy showing me pictures of his dog? Here was Winston and me hiking. This was last week, last Thursday, I think. So there, there we are. But yes, I, I will try to, to convince them to show up on the channel uh, more frequently. So thank you there, Klaus. Um, Investory, I don't know. You posted this very kindly that I should join Tom and Justin's podcast. But I don't know what Tom and Justin's podcast is. And I typed it into google and i couldn't find it um i think i came up with um justin timberlake's podcast that's probably not what you meant so you're gonna have to send me a link or something uh, for that um uh, okay some of you guys are speaking a different languages here which is also marvelous uh, we are going to go through a couple of earnings here uh what's also today it's etsy today right etsy is a big one before we do that, I'm going to show you a bit of new news. I'm going to show you a bit of Palantir news so that Noah doesn't, you know, stops jumping up and down in frustration because he's on the, he was the first one on the call. And um, Tikwan Lee is asking, what's your expectation for the taper announcement tonight? Uh, I expect them to announce it at relatively modest rates, maybe 15 billion a month or something like that. That's what most investment banks seem to be forecasting. So... That would take us a while, 120 billion. It would take us, what is that, nine months or something to get out of it. Is, that, is my maths there right? It, roughly, I think. Now, let's uh, throw out a little bit of, um, uh, and, and, and investor is just pointing up. I, I don't know where you're pointing up to. You're going to have to tell me that too. See, I need explanations. You know, I, I don't understand everything. So Neo battery swaps reach 600. So uh, I think that um, apart from the lady here in, in the appealing bra, uh, that's probably more 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 eye-catching than the Neo 600 swap stations. 
uh, we are going to hit the target of 700, maybe even 800 by year end. Uh, so that's good news. So that's definitely good news. And you can see here a map of where they all are. They're sort of all over the place. And you might be wondering why they're not more in this part of China. Well, there isn't a great deal in that part of China. So most of the sort of wealth sits here where the, where the um, swap stations are. And now 66% of them are the second generation ones who have uh, a much higher capacity or faster and don't need people to run them. So they are basically uh, rolling them out incredibly quickly, uh, which is, um, yeah. So the rate of neo vehicles to battery swap stations is falling because they're rolling them out so incredibly quickly. Uh, let's hope that's going to reverse next year because that would be good. Um, In investry, that's incredibly kind of uh, Tom and, and, and Justin, whoever they may be. Uh, seriously, would you would you you can't send me a link, can you? Because I disabled it so people wouldn't spam us quite as badly. Uh, drop me a line, investry. Would you would you drop me a line? I put my email in here again, uh, and I, I I I love being on other people's shows. It's always good fun to meet other people. So uh, I put my email in here just now. Anybody seriously, if you want to email me, ask me anything. Any thoughts you have? Anything investment related, dog related, goat related? Uh, I always love hearing from you. So that's uh, meant uh, genuinely. So uh, do feel free to always email me. Now, second piece of neo related news here. First of all, you should obviously watch my video from yesterday, which takes you through the maths of what I think delivery numbers will be till year end, which I think are pretty exciting. So again. Go on my channel and it's this one here. I didn't see this coming. You see, uh, this is my my attempts at uh, at getting more eyeballs on there, which was not all that particularly successful in this case. But I think I'll put it out at the same time as another video. So uh, there is me. So EV penetration in China is going to exceed 20%. So this year we were around 10%, 12%, depending on who you believe. So that on its own should double demand for neo cars just if they don't grow so if they didn't put out other cars and new models and and sedans and and cheaper models and all that sort of thing if that alone should in theory double um demand and, and and therefore deliveries hopefully they can buy the chips and the components and the parts and i that's why i continue to think that we're going to get another 100 plus percent growth year for neo here it's a fairly lengthy article we don't need to go through the whole thing but essentially um uh, you know, the, the country aims to achieve 20% by 2025, but I think the industry is doing it much quicker just because people can see it. No one in their right mind in China now is going to really buy a, a fuel vehicle. I would, just don't see why you would, because you sort of know the government's against it and, and that sort of thing. So um, Palantir, Noah, are you still with us? Uh, this one's for you. FDA. Uh, Palantir Technologies, uh, $14 million today, delivery order. That's an old contract. These always are. But it just means that they're getting paid, which is the good thing. And you can look this stuff up on the um, government website, or you can just uh, follow on, on, on Twitter. Uh, I am actually on Twitter, which I'm quite enjoying, I must say. So if you want to join me on there, uh, you can find me. It's uh, Finance Felix, I think. Finance Felix, yes. Uh, the you know Felix and Friends was taken. Felix Goat was taken. Goat Academy was taken. So it's Finance Felix. It's just me and a, and, a, and a few people, but it's actually quite nice because we're chatting to lots of people here. And Marcel, for example, from, um, you know, he runs a very popular Neo channel. Uh, we're having a bit of a chat. He's in Mallorca. Marcel, if you're watching, enjoy um, the sunshine for me too. So that's a good resource. Um, and I always, yeah, come over there if you want to get some extra stuff. I should also shout out, absolutely, the course program, the seven figure. Somebody asked for the link earlier on. I've extended the early bird deadline because this course is starting later in November and the pre-sale now ends on Sunday. So you've got four days, 14 hours, 46 minutes and 57 seconds left. So check it out. But if you do, um, make sure you take advantage of the coupon seven figures, the coupon, it gets you 40% off, which is, uh, is, is, is much more than you would ordinarily because it is a, um, a pre sale so check that out. Um, 216, what do you think of Elon's tweet yesterday? Uh, are you referring to, to Avis? Is that what you're referring to? Look at the happy goat. Uh, what do you think of my new goat video there? $2,142 we've sent to the goats so far. Isn't that marvelous? Um, we're going to talk about Elon. Uh, so obviously what I've done is I have sold everything I have and I've only bought things that Elon have just tweeted about in the last six months because that's the good financial advice that I look for nowadays. Uh, no, but on a more serious note, uh, the whole Avis thing is absolute madness, right? 
212% up because Elon tweeted that the Hertz contract wasn't um uh what wasn't a done deal yet. So um therefore Avis competitor flies 212%. There was also a short squeeze apparently 20% of the float is shorted of Avis. So madness. Uh, that's really what I think of it. I mean I love Elon. I, 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 but he's the the power he seems to have over financial markets is completely nuts. But here's what he said. He said, "I'd like to emphasize that no contract has been signed yet. Tesla has far more demand than production. Therefore, we'll only sell cars to Hertz at the same margin as to consumers. Hertz deal has zero effect on our economies." Uh, Musk tweeted late Monday. Although Hertz told CNBC that Tesla deliveries had already started. And um, yeah, so Avis, in fairness, also reported some decent uh, numbers, but certainly nothing to uh, justify a 212% jump there. So total total nuttiness in the market. Um, the Fed, of course, is we're going to dominate absolutely everything today, pretty much. Everyone's going to be sitting on the edge of their seat, freaking out, selling everything. No, seriously, no one's going to sell anything because look at what the market's doing here. Let me Let me show you. Let me show you market. You see how everything is pretty much lovely and green. Um, yeah, there's a bit of red here, but nothing dramatic. Uh, Lucid's down 3.3%, uh, plugs down 3%. Why is that? Well, that's probably politics. Uh, Republicans gaining, is it Virginia Republican uh, governor? It could make the Biden administration rather lame duckish. Uh, next, uh, very, very soon in the midterms. And that would make it very, very difficult for him to get most of his great big spending plans through. So Republicans just got stronger, more leverage, uh, and therefore we are less likely to see the scale of expenditure that Biden wants. And we're going to see a bit more of a cut down version. It's also good for markets because we are not going to get corporate tax increases. I don't think it's going to come. Uh, George Clee says a big like for Felix. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Um, and good morning. Um, and Brian is saying here, the Avis numbers, yes, they were good. They were like a hundred percent jump. You would expect that, right? Coming out of COVID and so on. You on earth rent, rents a car when, you know, the previous guy who sat in it might kill you. So yes, their numbers are improving, but 212% jump, that sort of madness. Now, Nazi, the Zillow uh, sell-off, we touched on that briefly at the beginning here. My thoughts on that are essentially, um, twofold. I don't think the housing market is going to completely collapse tomorrow because we still have shitloads, sorry for the swearing, of cheap cash. Interest rates are low. That's not going to change. And therefore, bubble markets, housing markets are going to keep going up. Plus, look, when you've got all this free money slashing about, there are only two places to put it in that give you a return. One's real estate and the other is stocks, essentially, right? Okay. And crypto. But you know, not everybody necessarily wants to do that to th such a large extent. So Zillow is a shovel business. They benefit from the data from people buying and selling. It's a beautiful business. I love shovel businesses. I have no idea why they ever started buying and selling houses. I think that was a bad move. They've corrected it. I think that's a good thing. Um, Martin is saying, could it be that the coupon code is invalid for the seven-figure course? Okay, let, let's check that out here. It shouldn't be, but let me go down. So, do, 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 do. Uh, so it says on here, it's discounted from 1200 to 720 if you enroll now. And if you enroll now, let's see what happens. What magical thing happens here. Um, and then we should be able to add the coupon code seven-figure. I... And there you go. It worked for me. If it doesn't work for you, uh, do let me know. We can also try the other one, which is if you're paying it on a on a um, sort of installment basis. Again, seven figure, and that should take that to $150 from $250. Yeah, it, it works for me, but Martin. But if you're having any trouble, Martin, do drop me an email. Uh, seriously, absolutely happy to help you out always. Uh, my email here is, is is on the screen again. So, so Martin, no, no worries. I'm always happy to help out people, um, especially if you wanted to get on the course community. Uh, that is always a good thing, and for your uh, for your financial future, I think. And and it's lovely to have you in the community. So, here is more news on um, basically the Fed. Fed is going to taper. The Fed is going to taper lots. And um, what does it mean? 
Well, it doesn't really mean all that much because the markets price in the future. The markets work on future earnings and what's going to happen in the future. This is priced in. It's as simple as that. Everyone knows the tapering is going to kick off today, whether it's at 10 billion or 15 billion or 18 billion a month. And no one particularly cares. I think that's really the, the, the truth here. So uh, there will be videos out. I'm sure, you know, Kevin will be in red with red hair going, oh, my God, it's happening. Crash is near and all that sort of stuff, which can be very entertaining. I don't blame him for it, but I wouldn't pay, ta um, I wouldn't, uh, pay too much attention. Um, David, welcome to the Patreon. Uh, appreciate you joining. It's a beautiful community. Come and join our lovely Discord community as well, uh, which of course is part of the Patreon and you get all the news first, like the new news, for example, just or lots of the Palantir news and absolutely everything else. You also see my trades. I just posted a bunch of options trades and also how the ones that I shared with you uh, last week and a few days back, uh, how, how they are doing. Uh, some are doing well and, and one in particular, Twitter really came in Bite bit me in the in the backside. So, Patrick, thank you very much for sharing that. I truly appreciate that. Patrick just shared that Neo sold forty six cars in Norway. I thought it was around the forty dollar mark. Sorry, the forty mark from registration records. So, thank you very much for sharing that. Uh, much appreciated. Um, uh, CH says, Tom has been pretty doomsday lately. Well, maybe somebody needs to, I don't know, buy him a beer or something, cheer him up. Uh, I, I don't know why people like go doomsday, but actually I do know why people go doomsday. You get about double the views if you go doomsday, uh, but it's just not what I, what I, what I want to do. I, I don't think it's the right thing to do to tell everybody that it's the end is near and everything is crashing and sort of selectively pick some, some, some numbers. You can always do, do that. I mean, I, I studied econometrics, which is a horrible thing to study don't do it uh, but uh, if you want to see a, a the opposite of what everyone else is saying on the crash stuff is uh, watch this video out here that i put out yesterday it's all purple it's got tom on it too uh, which i'm sure he appreciated uh, he hasn't he hasn't replied to my last message when i said oh, by the way i didn't mean to point the arrow at him i honestly didn't i just wanted to point at the phone uh, but yes yeah, so um, William uh, likes me, me, me um, swearing occasionally. Uh, thank you very much. You're now an honorary New Jersey. Uh, uh, thank you very much. I've actually been to New Jersey. I've visited some um, some some warehouses in New Jersey. It was, was probably not the prettiest part. It was only about an hour out of uh, Manhattan. But thanks very much for that. Is shorting Avis a good idea? I think probably is, but I don't know if you can get it done. That's usually the trouble with these things. When you get these great ideas and you want to short something like that, you might not be able to do it. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the problem with that. I, I What did I try to short last week? I couldn't get done. I can't remember what it was. Um, I honestly can't remember what it was, but yeah, I, I, the, the brokerage wouldn't let me. So... Um, are we and Tom not friends anymore? No, no, of course we are. We are friends. Uh, there's no um, no stick here between us. It's just, um, you know, Tom also puts out videos to entertain, right? I mean, that's really his style. He, his facts were not wrong. I just think they were selective. So we do sometimes disagree on things, but he's got a great sense of humor. He, he doesn't mind. I think he quite likes the attention too. I don't think he minds it. If someone comes out and says, I disagree with you, Tom, uh, which, which I do on that particular point, I think this, this, Buffett um, indicator of total market. Basically, one of his main arguments for a crash is he's saying the total market cap divided by GDP, which is this, this Buffett indicator. Buffett didn't come up with it. He just said once, probably in the 80s, he quite liked it. Um, if you imagine all the America, all the companies listed in the US, all their market cap divided by American GDP, that's the indicator. And it shows you 150 to 200 percent, depending on what metric you look at. And that's super high. That's higher than the dot com bubble. That's higher than 2008. The trouble with that is twofold. Um, about a third of all the companies listed in the US in terms of market cap are foreign. So you should take that out of the market cap, right? That would reduce the metric quite substantially. And then American companies are selling all over the world, right? U.S. companies are increasingly and have increasingly over the last 20 years become more and more international. So therefore, a lot of their sales, a lot of their revenues are not U.S. GDP related. And therefore, you really need to take into account some proportion of the world GDP to add to that metric. So I, I don't know. Maybe if you took the market cap of all the stock exchanges in the world and divided that by all the GDP in the world, that might be 
be a more interesting metric. Uh, but this 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 alleged Buffett indicator and using the word Buffett to make it sound more kind of reliable is is I think also a lot of nonsense. So, uh, Ted, thank you very much. Um, uh, metaverse. Yes, absolutely. Thanks very much for throwing that out, Robert. Metaverse. Uh, I'm actually a big fan. I hope to never have to use it, but I'm a big fan as an investor. Now, Microsoft is jumping in on it in good old Microsoft fashion. And you might think, again, these are not brands that people necessarily love, right? People are not in love with Facebook. Zuckerberg's not our favorite guy in the world, but nor is Microsoft. Most people slightly loathe Microsoft software, yet we all use it. But as businesses to invest in, I think both are brilliant. Now, that's my personal opinion. You don't have to invest in them. But uh, this is essentially what Microsoft Teams are doing. They are allowing you to use an avatar uh, in Teams, and you don't have to have um, some sort of headset for it or special glasses or anything, uh, though you can if you want to. You can have meetings in 3D or 2D. And why? Because some people are in Zoom meetings or Microsoft Team meetings rather, you know, virtually 24-7. And it's tiring to be on screen all day long when you really want to, you know, scratch yourself behind the ear uh, like a dog. Then that isn't great. So you have an avatar on there who looks nice and professionally dressed and you're sitting there in your PJs. So that's kind of the appeal. And so they're basically taking it. Here's a little video. You can see how that looks. Um, and um, I don't know why she's doing the little heart thing, but um, you can basically build your own avatar and you can all sit around the table in avatars and that way you don't have to necessarily be uh, be that dressed and you can perhaps get up and get a cup, cup of coffee and that sort of thing. So they're basically taking the beginnings of the metaverse into the corporate world. That's kind of what they're doing here. And I think it's a smart move. I think this is happening whether we like it or not. So as an investor, I quite like it. Nike also jumping on board here. They filed a um, trademark application on the 27th for downloadable virtual goods, basically everything they make for online virtual worlds and um, NFCs and that sort of thing. So you will start to see branded goods in these things and then maybe some way to ch charge and pay for that. If you want your avatar to wear the latest Nike sneakers, you might have to pay a dollar for that or something like that. So, um, uh, yes, uh, Eternal. Yes, I did mean Kevin because he's got that funny green hair filter thing on, right? Uh, which, uh, yeah, I think it's just an overlay. His hair isn't actually green. Um Nada says, FB, huge news, fully bullish, super bullish. My target is 360, uh, 360 degrees or $360. Uh, yeah, so I think both, I think will do quite well. Uh, I would recommend actually on YouTube, there is a new channel called Meta by Zook and he has a couple of videos out showing kind of how they envisage this. And I think that helps to kind of visualize what this looks like. It basically looks like a, like a computer game for the, from the 90s. So um and jeremy yeah the hair is green i imagine you can probably change it with the filter there um is it really green it looks it looks very much like a filter oh, okay maybe he got one of those spray can things for halloween and put that on but it died well okay let's hope it's it's something you can wash out Uh, P-Boy is asking, uh, do you think Palantir earnings will surprise to say uh, they're basically very useful for all the supply chain thing? Well, I did read an article earlier basically saying, look, uh, COVID's been a, been, a, been a gift to Palantir, which I think is probably true. Uh, so I think the 385 million that analysts have as, as an expectation is pretty conservative. They've also recruited a chap for their DHL sales role who came from... Salesforce, military health Salesforce just, which is, I think that's a really important hire. Um, so yeah, I, I think Palantir, personally, my feeling is they're going to give us good earnings. They have they have generally done that. So I, I think I'm personally quite bullish on it. But the onslaught from Wall Street and the analyst is continuing. Uh, you know, Deutsche Bank just put something out uh, titled uh, Neither Here Nor There. That was literally the title of their 20-page research paper on Palantir, and I'll share that with you guys later. I'll put it on the on the Patreon as well. Uh, interesting read, actually, but yeah, they sort of don't quite get it, I, I guess. They sort of get it, and then they sort of shrug back going, but we're not meant to get this. So therefore, a $25 price target, I think. 
Um, uh, Daniel bought some leaps on Neo. Okay, good for you. Tell let, let, tell us uh, what expirations you bought. That'd be interesting. Um, have you seen the dark pool on Palantir lately? Uh, let's have a have a look. Pull up of some charts here. Then let me open another window and we'll pull that up. Palantir. Okay, hang on. I've got another window open here. When that updates, it always pops up. So, okay, here we go. Third attempt to get onto a Palantir chart. Uh, I can get rid of SPY here and Snow here. I was doing some other uh, stuff earlier, as you can see. Candles. Candles would be nice. Can we get some candles? Okay, let's go on a day chart. All right, we'll get there. We'll get there eventually. Here we go. And we still have Palantir in, in here again. So on a day chart, well, that's Deutsche Bank. No wonder they're selling off. Deutsche Bank, by the way, managed to destroy 90% of their share price since 2008. That's quite a feat when the S&P has gone up 200 something percent in the same time period. But okay, from this particular chart, and I mean, don't take this DIX indicator to be the gospel, right? I wouldn't base my all my trades on this. It's just one piece of information that may or not be 100% accurate. Uh, it looks like as we are going above the $25, uh, the, uh, the, the sell-off actually speeds up. Uh, 2016, it says, do you have any videos showing how to use TradingView or do you know any uh, tutorials for it? I do a lot of uh, technical analysis teaching in, in our programs. Uh, the uh, the simplest one would be this the, the, the swing trading program I have on... Um, on our website and go to academy you can you can jump on it on there uh, otherwise um jump on the wait list for the master stocks program that's really would be the the best place to really go through all the indicators and what they mean and how they work together and that sort of thing uh, but i just sort of get started don't get overwhelmed with all the indicators just pull up maybe one or none just start to look at charts i also have a free a free explanation of actually what candles bars mean because these candle charts can be a little can be a little bit confusing right with their colors and the little tails and stuff and that's also on the patreon for free so do check that out uh, david smith says open i presume you mean the market <laughs> let's have a look then at what the market is doing it's looking pretty positive new up to 42 dollars which is brilliant Barber up a little bit after a, a mixed day in Hong Kong. NVDA up, Tesla up to 11.82, uh, still short of the $1,200 though. DD up strangely half a percent. Uh, so a lot of stuff up here. What's what's being punished? Plug. Um, that's probably because of the uh, the U.S. Gov go governor elections in in Virginia and so on. Uh, that's gonna make it much harder for Biden to get his infrastructure plans past coins down a bit palanted down just 0.7 percent but i wouldn't read too much into that so if i also uh, meta in meta and platforms inc it now says under fb uh, that was quick a uh, ride also down a little bit but overall a reasonably reasonably green market here i would say um uh lone wolf thanks very much for checking that out just buy more tesla neo fb says nado uh, Carl says, let's look at PayPal. We can definitely do that. Uh, and David says, Palantir is doing its daily opening dip as usual. I mean, the, the first two hours in the morning are always a little bit of a retail investor madness. So I wouldn't uh, read too much into that. Uh, I wouldn't be too obsessed with uh, trading in those particular times. So PayPal strangely continuing its sell-off. Um, let me pull out here a 100-day moving average line, which we passed absolutely ages ago. We are now below, I think we are below the 300-day average line by now, which is really crazy. Yeah, we are. Uh, while if you believe and uh, trust the, the dark pool indicators, well, institutions are loading up the boat more and more every single day. Uh, we are going into earnings on the 8th. That's Monday. So perhaps we're not going to see much of a turnaround there. It's the biggest sell-off we've had. I mean, even the sell-off uh, at COVID time was in a way not as extreme. So it's a massive, massive sell-off here uh, for, for them. So I personally still think PayPal is a brilliant business. And 
The, the kicker here that got us to start the selling off was really this, this Pinterest acquisition. And that's not happening. I wasn't a huge fan of that. So that's not happening. So why are we still selling off? No particular reason for it. I think it's just, you know, look at that volume here. You just sort of kick off one of these momentum things, one of these emotional movements, and then uh, everybody just keeps selling and it sort of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, ETFs have to keep tracking it. So, you know, if it sells off more, they have to sell off more to keep keep abreast with the market. And a lot of people have uh, stop losses and then, then you sell off more and that sort of thing. But yeah, you know, there we go. Abby Chappie, uh, welcome. Uh, one of our lovely members. Uh, Abby's asking, what are your thoughts on uh, Rivian? I think it's very expensive too. I really do. I think, what is it, 85 billion or something that they want? It seems like like a lot. And okay, they have Amazon as a backer. That's nice. Uh, but then, you know, Neo has Tencent as a backer. Xpang has a, has a Alibaba as a backer. Most people have a backer. Uh, Lucid has a, the Saudi billions as a backer. So everybody has a backer of some sort. That doesn't really make me want to buy it. The 10,000 vehicle order from Amazon, again, is nice. But, you know, that's not going to get you through years and years of orders. That's just like a little bit to get you started, which is great. But so it's it's expensive. Does that mean it's not going to do well? No, it doesn't. I think given the excitement around EVs and the excitement around American EVs particularly, I think it might well fly. But then let's look at, you know, look at Lucid and the volatility there. So that's sort of a little bit my worry that it's going to be look a little bit like this. Uh, we are going to see a massive spike and then people are going to take profits afterwards. And then it's going to take some time to recover here. Uh, so personally, I, I'm not going to be buying it at the IPO. I'm not a huge fan generally of IPOs unless they are priced very reasonably, which sometimes they are. But this one is definitely priced at the at the highest end of uh, of crazy. Uh, CYF wants me to do an analysis on Facebook Meta and the dark pool situation. Uh, yes, that's an interesting idea. I might do a video on that. Thank you very much for that. I'm going to take a little screenshot of it, and that way I'll remember. Thank you for the suggestion. Um, Sam says, hello from Yorkshire. Hello there to you. Is it cold and rainy? That's kind of what I imagine Yorkshire to be like. It's actually lovely and green if you haven't been there. Uh, nice mountains and that sort of thing. But it's always cold and windy whenever I go. Um, uh, Keith, I have heard of uh, uh, Yushin or UXIN, essentially a, a second-hand car sales platform. Uh, in, in China, yeah, I, I, I don't have much of an opinion on these, to be honest with you. I mean, William Lee is, in, is likes these and Neo Capital invests in these because his previous business was precisely that. So he understands a lot about it. So they perhaps know something that I, uh, I, I don't. Um, Said, thank you very much for putting your name in in, in there uh, because it's different from your your uh, screen name. Uh, what I think about PayPal now? Look, I, I like PayPal. I, I like it fundamentally. It hasn't changed for me. The the numbers are still terrific. Uh, if you check out some of my um, my benchmarks over the last week or so, we had that included, and you can see it. And the numbers are always brilliant for for for, for PayPal. So I I just think. This is kind of an overreaction. In fact, I'm, I'm happy to pull it up for you uh, and you can see what I'm talking about here. Uh, so let me just put in PayPal here. And then we have our GOAT Academy quality, quality indicators and PayPal is here, this row here. Um, return on capital invested is 13%, uh, gross margins 48%. Free cash flow margin is 20%. It's pretty marvelous. They are um, growing 23% long term. Given, given how old and company this is, this is a pretty difficult thing to do. So if you buy this now, yeah, you're paying a PE of 55, but in two years' time, just with the predicted growth, uh, you're going to have a, a PE of 36, essentially, because you know if you hold on to it. So I, I just you know, think... It, they, they all do a good thing. I think they have a good mode. So many people are signed up. I use PayPal. Everybody uses PayPal. So I, I think they are doing a good job. And compared to Square, I think it's still much cheaper. So I, I like that. Sam says it's a little chilly. Uh, thanks for the for the weather update there. Um, uh, Ed Run says Tiger. Well, the the risk is still there from my point of view uh, of. Um, Chinese regulatory stuff, which is why Tiger goes up and down like mad every single day. 
Uh, let me let me just see what it's doing right here. It's up 6.5% today. So it's massively volatile. It's not really my cup of tea for that reason. I prefer two types of things. One, big event-driven stuff where you can make money on an options play earnings. For example, I shared a couple of options plays I did this morning on the, on the Discord community. If you're not there yet, well, check out the Patreon. By the way, you should also, if you just joined, uh, download Bank of America's top 13 stocks that they think are going to outperform by January or up till January. These are sort of tax harvesting loss rebounds. That's basically what, they, what they're saying. So, but generally speaking, I prefer things I can just buy and hold and I can, I can accumulate over time. Pranam, good morning there to you. Um, Rivian is going to IPO. Um, yeah, Chris, I, I appreciate they're going after the truck EV market, which is definitely a, a big market. Uh, it's just, it's it's pretty pricey, right? I mean, we are pricing in some serious success here. Uh, Future is asking, what are the inter interactors for stock splits? I'm thinking of Tesla. Well, one of the reasons you do stock splits is so people can buy in more easily so people can buy and sell the, their, their positions more, more in a more liquid way. Uh, when your share prices go up to, you know, $1,200, not everybody can necessarily buy a 1200 stock every Monday morning. So it's better if your stock is $30, it becomes more liquid. And secondly, your options uh, become super expensive. So, you know, if you buy one option Say you bought one call option, which I never recommend to anybody does on Tesla. That's a hundred sh underlying shares of Tesla. So you're now looking at a, at a hundred and eleven thousand uh, dollars of capital required there. So uh, that's fairly tricky for most investors. So it it removes your your stocks from 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 that market, which is also why you know Buffett, for example, he loves that his stocks is worth hundreds of thousands of dollars because people can't just trade it that easily. Um, just enough says maybe not Zillow from that list. Hang on, are they on that list here? No, 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 they're not on the list. Um, but yes, is Zillow. Well, I mean, okay, let's have a look at the Zillow stock chart. Let's have a look at the Zillow stock chart. Let me show it to you. Zillow. Oops. Zillow. Zillow. So Zillow tanking here, six percent, ten percent, and today another fifteen percent. So kind of hard to get that on a chart here. Uh, so is that an overreaction? I would probably think so. Um, I know you know earnings were bad, uh, revenue was thirteen percent down, but it's it's still, you know, we're getting back to basically levels of. August 2020. So if we can go back a bit more, well, you know, it might fall a little bit more, who knows, but it's definitely, um, you know, one of those where the market, I think it really like slams on the brakes here. Uh, Daniel thinks that Tesla should split to $69. I think typically if people split, they sort of do a one to four or something. So you might get back to 300 bucks or something like that. I, I doubt they're going to make it that cheap. Um, uh, but yeah, it's it's basically, you know, when you start going over a thousand bucks, I think uh, it becomes almost the prudent thing to start to split at some point. Uh, Simon is saying, is, is uh, Polestar, which is the GGP ice back, a better buy than Rivian? Well, it's certainly the the lower valuations. That's the way I, I would look at that. And I've done a video on this with all the valuation comparisons. It's It's gone up a bit, but it's still only sitting at 1070. So that's up about 7% or so. So people are waiting for the merger. The merger is confirmed, but it's going to happen sometime the first half of next year. Okay, more of you in Yorkshire, uh, JB. <laughs> it's cold, wet and windy here. Uh, Keith, thank you very much for the kind comments. Much appreciate that. Uh, Law, I don't know much about Activision Blizzard, uh, I'm, say, I'm afraid. Uh, David says, when do you go live? Um, I, I appreciate you, your very kind comments there. Uh, I'm live every Tuesday to Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern time. So that's New York time. 
Uh, so we start half an hour before the market opens uh, and, and typically we, we run for about an hour or so. So thank you for the kind comments there, David. Much appreciate. Um, are we going to get a, a tapir tantrum or even a taper tantrum? <laughs> Sorry, I know it's just a typo there. Uh, but yeah, I'm just picturing the, the, the tapir with a long nose. Uh, so I don't think we will, uh, Sadi, because, Sadi Goff, because we know it. We know it's happening. It's not a surprise. No one is not expecting tapering. Literally anybody who's half alive and not entirely deaf, dumb or blind uh, these, uh, these last six months knows tapering is coming today. Uh, 2 p.m. New York time. So I don't think the market's going to react much to it. Uh, yes, Powell's going to say some things. He's going to try and convince us that everything is wonderful, uh, which might be a little bit hard. But yes, uh, Daniel Young says build wealth for the people. That's precisely what we do here. That's entirely the point of the whole thing here. And on that note, I've got a free web webinar on Saturday, same time as this, but it won't be on YouTube. So you have to be uh, signed up for it. And I'm going to teach how you pick great stocks, irrespective of the market cycle. So whether you're at the peak of it or the bottom of it, and whether it's growth or traditional established companies, we're going to look at both. So it's going to be a bit of a different format here because we're not going to be jumping around with the market and everything that's happening live. So uh, it's a, a first webinar and hopefully a series. So so sign up, guys. Um, it's it's um, it's nearing its capacity, I think. So, so don't hang about felixfriends.org slash webinar for those of you who are listening um, felixfriends.org slash webinar is how you sign up Danny says will you buy some Zillow uh, I, I'm tempted but I think uh, it might be worth waiting out the day at least uh, for this, 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 this kind of craziness to end now we just got some economic data in here which I want to share with you okay what have we got the market composite PMI um, what on earth is that? <laughs> um, I don't think that's particularly important. Um, Non-manufacturing um, price, something or other. Uh, we also have the employment change. That's a little bit more important. Uh, so that's a massive jump here. That's the private businesses employing. They hired 570,000 workers in October. Um, compared to 523 in September, and we were expecting 400,000 hires, we got 571. So that means there's finally something happening here, which is well timed for Jay Powell to speak. He's probably scribbling little amendments into his speech at the moment uh, as he sees that number coming out. So uh, that's positive, but the market doesn't necessarily love it. The market actually quite likes unemployment. Uh, yes, we are horrible people. We equity investors, aren't we? Um, uh, CH says you're pumped about the webinar. Uh, thanks very much, CH. It'd be great to have you on there. Uh, I, I, I think I saw you signed up. I think you were one of the early ones who signed up. Um, Future A to B says, Daniel, if you bought in time, of course you would be. And Daniel says, if everybody owned shares, everybody would cheer. And yes, I'm with you on that. And I think that's really, uh, Daniel, the, 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 intention here with our entire program is to spread reasonable investment education that makes people not jump to headlines, make people not be a victim of Wall Street and fall prey to all the idiotic headlines on CNBC and so on, and buy the latest fad when it's too expensive and jump out of it uh, just when it's time to start buying it. So uh, that's on that note, that's also precisely what we teach in the seven-figure portfolio program, how you can build that. That's on pre-sale because the course launches later on in November. And I don't just teach you how to pick great stocks because, of course, that's part of it but also all asset classes, how to actually diversify and how to know whether your diversification is working. And I'll show you how you can model those things easily and for free using the kind of, say, Monte Carlo models that, for example, ARK uses. We've seen them do that with Tesla stock, for example. So you can do that. There are free tools for it. I'll show you how to use them and how you can plug your and build your portfolio. You can amend it. And when you make changes to it, when you're buying or selling something, you can actually know and model 
how that is going to impact your wealth over the next 10 years or so. Those small decisions do really, really matter. So that's what we are looking at here, uh, how to get to a million dollars plus portfolios. If you already have a million dollars plus portfolio, we're going to get you to $10 million plus. That's the program here. Completely risk-free, as always, uh, within 90 days of you taking the entire course. None of this will be drip-fed. You, uh, you can return it if you didn't feel you got the value you deserved here. Uh, Danny, do you own Palantir shares? I do, yes. Uh, though I also do uh, do some options trades uh, on it uh, with earnings coming up. It's it's sort of an easy one here. You can see, can you see that here on the screen? Uh, here are some of my Palantir uh, options trades at the moment. Two, four, six, well, three, three positions really, but it can become six, uh, which so far at the moment are up about $1,000, but the expiration is until uh, is until November 20th or December 18th. So that'll hopefully creep up quite nicely. Uh, I, I share those kind of updates on the on the Discord. And I also tell you when my things go south, which they do, because it's just part of options trading. You just have to understand uh, that the each trade can't wipe you out. That's really the important thing there. Uh, David is talking about Zillow here. Yeah, so they're basically getting rid of their, their home flipping business. I have no idea where they ever got into it. I guess it was just too tempting, uh, a bit like it was too tempting to smash the like and the subscribe button when you're tuned into this video because it helps our goat friends here. We've sent them over $2,100 so far, uh, thanks to your like. So uh, let's keep those likes coming. And I appreciate that. And the goats would like it too at the Gentle Barn. So I think Zillow is a great shovel business. When you are in a shovel business, don't go into the real world, stay a shovel business. And I think that's the mistake they made there. I think it's good that they're correcting it. I think heads off to them really for correcting it. It's hard to make to admit that you made mistakes and uh, most people just stick with it. Now, has anyone been following the nonsense of, well, I say nonsense, the COP26, uh, the global pledge to slash methane? Uh, let me show you something amusing here. At least I thought it was amusing. 44,000 people traveled to the summit to save CO2 emissions. Here are some of the private jets. There is the uh, Israeli one, an El Al jet that's chartered. Uh, here we have Biden, who, of course, flew in on probably two jets. Here's Biden's um, <laughs> fully petrol-fueled uh, motorcade driving into Glasgow. Uh, you know, saving the planet one at a time. That's the helicopter flying above him, you know, saving some more fuel. Here's the Canadian prime minister flying in on his uh, Can Force one. Um, there is uh, the El Al machine again. Here's the Japanese PM, all flying in on their own jets, of course. It's required the Clinton Foundation flying in. Uh, this is the Clinton Foundation's jet. They have two of these, the Desort, he flew in from Dominican Republic. Um, and Boris Johnson flew in on a private jet. Um, there he is, uh, the Boris. Uh, Prince Charles, his royal highness, flew in on a private jet. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of ridiculous, really, isn't it? Uh, Jeff Bezos is there with his foundation, also flew in on a private jet. Uh, here it is. He's got a $65 million Gulfstream 650ER. That's pretty much as good as it gets. So it's kind of insane, right? Like 44,000 people get together. You know, this is, you could have done this in the metaverse. Zuckerberg would have hosted it for free and we would have saved how much? You know how much uh, CO2 they um, pumped out? I think it was, hang on, I had a statistic here. It was 85,000 tons, I think. Um, I think it's 85,000 tons, which is absolutely insane because I didn't know really what a ton of CO2 is, but... Basically, um, if you drive a, um, a car for half a year, you generate one ton. And I'm not talking about the great big American gas guzzlers, but a sort of you know small European car. Uh, the electricity consumption of a household for one year, for a year and a half, is about one um, ton. So this is basically 130,000 people's emissions for one year getting together to save the planet. I mean, I, I think you can really see some humor in this. I, I certainly can. So, um, okay, Rick is asking me here, what's a shovel business? Okay, sorry for the strange language. Basically, a business that makes money out of other businesses. So it takes virtually no risk. And it just is someone who gets a fee. So say if you are a listing business for the real estate market and you are the dominant player, 
every single time someone sells a house, you get, you know, your hundred dollars or whatever for the listing. Um, and you are a shovel because you don't have to do anything. The cost to you is virtually zero. And every time a transaction happens, you are shuffling some money basically very, very easily. So it's just one of those businesses that is just easy and beautiful and, and, and uh, without actually taking any real risk. You take no real risk on inventory or any of those things. So that's why I, I call them shovel businesses. Uh, I, maybe it's, um, it's, it's an unusual phrase. Um, uh, David, yeah, I, I was not suggesting that somebody should pick them all up <laughs> in a sort of, uh, uh, you know, uh, all crammed together or something. But I mean, uh, what 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 do these meetings really achieve by shaking each other's hands? Uh, I, I think, as Nazi says, they could have zoomed the whole thing. Uh, I think that would have been a hell of a lot more efficient. And it would have set the tone, really, to the rest of the world and say, hey, guys, uh, rather than getting 44,000 people together, uh, we're going to do this on on, on Zoom or, or, or some other form. Okay, Olaf says, if these guys can get together and make some difference, then I'm all for it. Well, let, let's hope they do. The, the slide, I mean, I'm, I'm a little bit of a cynic on this stuff. Um, two reasons. One is that we measure mainly CO2, which is a fairly random thing to measure. Uh, and I'm not saying we don't need to reduce it. We do, but we need to reduce all emissions, all waste, all environmental pollutants, and not just one. Um, and there is always lobbying with these things, right? Somebody always benefits from these. And maybe I'm too much of a cynic, but you know who's benefiting from this massively? The nuclear industry. Uh, we are building more nuclear reactors than ever before because they are now officially green because they don't emit CO2. And now the problem, of course, is that they put out something which is horribly uh, toxic for thousands and thousands of years and we have no idea what to do with it so not really a great solution either but so you know there is always business in these things so that's I'm a bit of a cynic with these type of things i do hope that they sincerely will stop deforestation that would be the the, the biggest thing that they can achieve and uh, none of the targets are binding there's no mechanism for punishment there's no real mechanism for uh for trading any of it or any real incentive so it's basically forty thousand people got together and said let's do something and pledge something, whether or not that'll be achieved. We'll have to wait and see. Um, um, okay, Jake, absolutely. Okay, Jay Copti here. Thank you very much for, I was wondering where the word shovel comes from. You are completely right. It comes from the gold rush. I remember reading a book on this many years ago, and you reminded me. Thank you very much. Where nobody made any money because nobody found sufficient gold. And if they did, they got ripped off or something. Uh, but the guys selling the equipment, they made all the money. So I prefer investing in the shovels, in the equipment suppliers, than in the actual businesses taking some risks here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Desmond says it met it means I've met 26 times, but nothing's really happened. Well, yes. Um <laughs> Rick, thank you very much there. Uh, yeah, look at the English language is full of funny idioms, and that's one of the hardest things about learning English, that a lot of the phrases are meaningless to foreigners unless you know where that came from. Uh uh, and Abraham also says that liquefied natural uh, gas is also renewable. Yeah, that's funny, isn't it? Apparently, it's cleaner than petroleum. <clears throat> um, and, and Michael uh, says here, China and India didn't attend. Absolutely. Uh, two of the biggest polluters. Now, why didn't they attend? They're basically saying, look, first world, you had a chance to pollute the world. You've cut down all the forests in Europe and in the United States, which is true. Uh, and we want our chance to do the same thing and achieve your levels of wealth. Once we've done that, we are happy to come on board. I mean, they're not quite saying that, but that's sort of a little bit the undertone here. They don't want to be bullied. So um, if Desmond says 40,000 pinky promises, uh, can we get to 40,000 likes on the stream? Do you think that's possible? That'd be rather marvelous. Um Yeah, okay. let's not get into the whole climate change uh, debate here too, too, too much. But it's just, you know, I generally hope if they can, I mean, I remember being about 10 years old and uh, people telling us that we are going to incentivize uh, Brazil to stop carrying, cutting down the Amazon. 
That hasn't happened. They've been cutting it down faster than ever before, as have most countries of forests. Why? Because they make money out of it. And, uh, you know, Burger King needs the, needs the steaks. So, you know, if you really want to do something about it, you can. But the question is if people really want to. Roti says that the backup plan plan is to get go to Mars with Elon, right? Elon will be our our overlord, uh, and there will be uh, be be new uh, uh, cryptocurrencies coming out every day, going up and down a thousand of, of percent. If you guys haven't already, uh, click on this link down below, felixfriendsorg slash thirteen. Uh, what is that uh, unlucky number? Nothing unlucky there. It's Bank of America put out a a paper saying they think there are certain stocks. That will haven't done very well this year, and they think are going to do well because they were punished through basically uh, tax-related uh, uh, sell-offs. So there's a list there, and I made a list for you, and I've shared it with you, so you can download that for free. If you're already on the Patreon, guys, you don't need to uh, go on these links. Just go on the Patreon, and you can see it there. Uh, it, it's it's faster. If you haven't already, also join us for the webinar on Saturday. That won't be on YouTube, so you won't see me here on YouTube. You'll be sitting at home, uh, you know twiddling your thumbs, thinking, I wish I would have clicked on that sign up uh, button for the phoenixfriends.org webinar, and I will be teaching how to pick great stocks. Uh, it'll be purely an educational thing. So we're not going to talk about the market. We're just going to talk about how we pick great stocks, whether the market is expensive, whether the market is cheap, whether they're growth stocks, or whether they are your traditional stocks, they say your Microsoft or something like that. Uh, I, I'm not uh, sort of as blinkered as some on YouTube who think you should only do one or the other. I think there is room for both. It's just a question of of allocation and, and sort of metrics. And one is easier to buy than the other. Um, Desmond says, can't wait for the webinar. Sign up, everyone. Uh, well, thank you very much, Desmond. Uh, brilliant. I look forward to having you on the... Uh, Raphael, for um, okay, real time visibility into dark pools is a bit tricky. So on tradingview.com, which is what I use, uh, you can pull up an indicator called DIX, which is appropriately named to tell us what what Wall Street's up to. Uh, that isn't a perfect indicator, right? It it isn't. It isn't necessarily up to date. It isn't necessarily 100% accurate for every stock. It's probably more accurate for, say, the S&P or QQQ than it is for individual stocks. And I, I've been saying that ever since I discovered it. So always take every indicator. And if you're day trading, I think you appreciate that. No single indicator will make you a gazillionaire. Otherwise, we all would be. But it is certainly one piece of information that is useful. So um uh, David, fundamental analysis, the webinar, uh, yes and no. I mean, we're going to basically break down into a system that we can use to look at stocks uh, to tell easily uh, whether they are good buys or not good buys. We're going to uh, sort of demystify the whole price earnings thing that most people get too distracted by. And I mean, David, just wait for Saturday. I'll, I'll tell you all about it on Saturday. It'll be fun. Uh, Chris says, Kevin's hair really is that green. I really, I really thought it was a filter because you can do these things with, with filters and OBS. I could make myself look, uh, you know, in a really, really strange color. Uh, but okay, I, in that case, I hope you can wash it out because it's a fairly hideous color. The webinar is at the same time as the usual videos, absolutely, uh, Lone Wolf. You'll also get a, you'll get a reminder from me as well. And when you sign up on this uh, felixfriends.org slash webinar, it tells you the time in your time zone. And you get an email as well with the time in your time zone. So wherever you are in the world, you'll know where it is. Um, uh, Raphael says, thanks. Um, I, I think if you are if you are actively trading, uh, you you appreciate um, looking at just one thing is is probably not not a good thing to do um kevin is a clown well he's very entertaining he's incredibly hard working i haven't i have tremendous respect for him nobody works as hard as that i tried it for a little while i put out six seven videos a day i i, I can't do it uh, I, it just doesn't really work um in character and our hair color uh, will you record the video and post to the patreon says sm i don't know yet i'll probably send a recording to people who've attended so you can play it back. So I'd encourage you to attend SM. Uh, I think that would be the, the, the best thing to do. 
Uh, SY says PayPal's fallen to 226. Is it a good time to start? Uh, you know, I'm pretty bullish on, on, on PayPal. I think it's uh, a brilliant business. I think they have a very strong market position. I don't think it's going to go away. They're very profitable. They're growing at, was it, 23% or something. Considering how old they are as a business, that's pretty, pretty tremendous. So I like it. I like it when it's cheap. I like it when it's below the 100-day moving average line. At the moment, it's below the 300-day moving average line. So it's basically in COVID territory. COVID crash territory. Uh, basically, PayPal caught COVID, uh, the, the, the Delta variety, and they weren't vaccinated. Uh, so that's what's happening over there. Uh, I personally think it's a massive overreaction. I, I, I'm not saying you should therefore buy it. Do some digging, look at the numbers. Um, I've got quite a few benchmarks out on the on the on the Patreon where you can look at the numbers, but I personally uh, like it a lot. So um Batuhan is saying I like and follow Ke Kevin I think he's incredibly entertaining and I think people also get that he is entertaining uh, and he does a lot of covers a lot of general news he explains a lot of things but a lot of the time he is also just you know there to entertain and I think that's a that's a great thing he's doing there I think he's uh, certainly better than most television shows so Tesla absolutely flying I mean just flying and flying and flying um the twelve hundred dollars was essentially our resistance line here largely because Elon tweeted uh, the, the, the Hertz contract, uh, which made Avis go up 200%, which is just madness, really. But yeah, so I think the momentum is probably still in there. Is it cheap? No, it's not cheap. But uh, it, it's at this point a momentum stock. I think they're going to drive it to $1,500. That's just my view on that. And Visa, MasterCard, Genie X, also uh, uh, below 300 moving average. Thanks for sharing that. I'm a big holder of Visa. Uh, why do I not buy MasterCard? Same sort of company. So why read two financial statements? Why listen to two earnings calls when you can only do one? Uh, that's the way I do it. So I just pick the one and move on. Um, Avis is down 15% already. Well, I guess they have a long, a long way to go there. Uh, I, if you can short this, you can probably make some money because uh, that's just crazy. If a stock was normally worth $170, it isn't suddenly worth an extra $120. Uh, you know, even though the earnings were good, yeah, they were good, 56% earnings surprise, but they're not going to be that good. Uh, Alan says Palantir is going to break out when the uh, SBC is going to be, be contained. And that's basically going to happen as soon as the earnings come out. Uh, that's going to reduce the annual metric for SBCs, and it's going to improve the next couple of quarters. So if you haven't already, go to my, my channel page, and here we've got the Palantir earnings and the new earnings out, and make sure you click the little set reminder, and then you know uh, when they're out, and you join us for that, because the guidance is going to be super, super important. I think what, what they're going to talk about there, that's going to really matter. Uh, and CH says, Wall Street bets are at it again, absolutely, with, with car companies. Who would have thought, hey? Uh, so, if you haven't already, uh, also do jump on our seven-figure, how you build a seven-figure portfolio course. That course is on pre-sale. It closes on Sunday, the pre-sale. So, the 40% off does. That is, check it out. I basically teach you not just how to pick great stocks, but also how to pick other asset classes, how to diversify, and how to build that long-term plan. Because financial planning is really the key to success here. Not picking the one great stock. It's It's about a long-term journey. Uh, that's what we do. We teach how to model like portfolio managers do. That's things like Monte Carlo modeling, how to do back testing. And I give you all the tools. Uh, they're all free to use. You get, of course, a beautiful supportive community, including myself. You can chat with me while you're on the program at any time. And essentially, I want you to stop being taken advantage of by Wall Street, whether it's directly by funds or financial advisors or portfolio managers or just by the headlines, because the headlines are put there by somebody who wants you to act a certain way so they can act the opposite way, right? I mean, that's the way the press works. So jump on it. 40% off is the coupon is seven figure. Uh, the link is down below or just type in felixfriends.org slash seven. That's the number seven. So um, Scherzer says, good morning, uh, go Neo. 2,000 shares in Neo, Keith Hanhurst. Uh, Peter, you have access, uh, trouble accessing the free tools. I am sorry to hear that. You Okay, one thing. First of all, I'm going to put my email in here so I can help you out. I'm going to put my email in here so you can definitely email me and, and ask me if I can't help you here. But if you go to my website, 
this is the uh, the page about the, the portfolio, the seven figure portfolio program. But if you just go to go to academy.org, you see at the top here free resources, and there is a ton of stuff here, free courses, free options trading courses, um, how to avoid what losses, wealth calculators, and all that sort of stuff. So you can you can uh, read all of those, enjoy all of those, take advantage of all of those for free. So uh, check that out while it's there. But if you're having trouble with it, by all means, always email me, email me any questions you have. Do um, Wasim is bullish on Polestar. Uh, I am too, Wasim. I'm with you on that. I think that's a, a, a sleeping a sleeping one there still. It's going to get woken up at some point. Um, uh, Y'all seen about Baba? Yeah, earnings are not announced yet. We haven't got a date for it. Some people think it's tomorrow, but it isn't. It might be next week or the week after. They haven't announced it yet. So we're going to have to look for that. I mean, they did give away 100 billion RMB last month, right? That's 15 billion US dollars. So don't expect fireworks from earnings, but uh, I'll definitely be live streaming that for sure. Uh, so yeah, we're definitely going to cover that here. Uh, make sure you're subscribed for that. I truly appreciate you being here. I appreciate you hitting the like button for the goats. We've sent them $2,142 so far, which is absolutely brilliant. Thank you for that. And keep hitting that like button. And I look forward to seeing you same time, same place tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in. Have a brilliant trading, investing day, wherever you are in the world.